Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us on the program, website thisweekinamerica.us. Talking about the book with a rewarding life, Cheryl Gordon brings clarity to obscure words, collaborates with over a 1,000 Canadians, and raises money for dementia research. When Cheryl saw her mom lose her words to dementia, she understood like never before that words have meaning. To honor her mom, she asked Canadians who make her life more rewarding to pen an indelible sentence for an abstruse, bemusing, or convoluted word. She happened to choose words she tends to forget. She hopes to harness these scintillating sentences to help eradicate dementia. Cheryl lives in Toronto, Canada. Used to work in the information technology field, now pursuing a career as a freelance writer and trainer. She hopes the book can help raise money for everyone who's at risk of losing their words in the end. And she's with us on This Week in America. Cheryl, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much, Rick. It's lovely to be here. This and is what not, a lovely, what a, what a lovely introduction. You summed it up very well. Well, thank you. And it's amazing what you're doing because, and we'll talk about this in, in great length. This is a fundraiser to help the Alzheimer's Society, but it's also a chance for all of us to have some fun with words. It's almost like you, you pick the book up. It's almost like a game that we can play, isn't it? Yes, I'm, I'm hoping that people will use it that way. Um, I actually wrote the, the book because um, all of the words that are included in the book, and there are over a thousand obscure words, were words that often um, were words that I often forgot to use in daily conversation or if I saw them um, while reading, I couldn't often place my finger on them. So um, I really wanted to disambiguate them. And um, I asked some Canadians to to pen some scintillating sentences for them to do that. Um, but I'm hoping that people, when they read the book, you know, can make notes next to the sentences if it's still not clear for them, or um, just talk about the words. You know, it's like interesting. We're doing today. Yeah. yeah, you can pick the book up and go through it, or you can just pick it up from time to time and look through their their bio, their set in alphabetical order. You can look at those and actually learn a new word as you're going through. And I really feel like I I know your mother after reading the book. Talk about her love for words, because that was very important in her life, which she helped teach you like three languages. So words were a very important part of who she was. Yeah, well, my mother um, spoke English and French fluently. Um, we're from Canada, and I grew up on the East Coast, um, which is where a lot of Acadians live. And Acadians, um, in case your audience don't know, tend to speak French and English. Um, so it's a bilingual part of the country. And, um, you know, she would just kind of uh, navigate um, her world e- either using French or English, and she never struggled with words. Um, that being said, she wasn't um, she wasn't someone to use um, you know sesquipedalian type languages. She she kind of stuck to simplistic terms. Um, but I guess because of that, like I would I would summarize my mom as sort of taciturn, and I think I'm kind of like that in a lot of ways. And and because I'm like that, I tend to or I'm I tend to be drawn t- towards books. I love to get lost in books because the descriptions are very clear and vivid. Um, And that's where I fell in love with the words that are in a rewarding life. Um, And those words are not something that I grew up with. Uh, They're not words that my mother used, but because I I am a reader, they are words that kind of helped me through troubled times. Um, I think I'm a big reader, and I, I tend to get drawn into books, especially as kind of a, I guess, I read to kind of help me out in times of, right. you know, dark times and stuff like that. Did it help you through, and it, I've read you still miss your mother, and that, that makes perfect sense, and you've gone back and lived different aspects of the life. In the book, you've got uh, eight essays, and we'll talk about those in a second, but did this book, putting this book together, did this help you personally? Uh, for sure. Um, you know, I put this book together for an, a number of reasons. Um, kind of hard to to summarize why, but one of them was, um, you know, for for I felt a lot of guilt. I think and when my mom was was sick, she was she had dementia for five years, and because my mother and I are both taciturn people. Um, it would be difficult to have conversations at the best of times. 
So when I saw her losing her words, uh, there was a lot of regret, um, you know, from me not being able to express myself or knowing that I could have expressed myself maybe better with her while we had our words. Um, so that guilt really helped me, um, I guess it propelled me towards, towards writing this book. Um, that's when I decided, you know what, because I tend to escape with books and all of those words that I discovered while reading, maybe I could harness those words to raise money for um, people who eventually lose their words in the end. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're listening to This Week in America, Cheryl Gordon, our guest on the program. The book is A Rewarding Life. The website is very simple, a rewardinglife.com. You can link on directly to our website, her website, by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. The book's available uh, at bookstores all over. You can go to amazon.com as well and get information on the book. This was a project I understand took about two years and really caught on. How did you come up with the list of people that you that you contacted to, to submit a, a word for the book? Uh, well, it's called A Rewarding Life, uh, which is a pun from the idiom, A Rewarding Life. And uh, because of that, I just reached out to people who make my life rewarding. Um, so initially, I was just kind of drawn towards authors because they have a natural uh, proclivity to use uh, words and uh, obviously enjoy them. So I reached out to authors. But then I was like, you know, there's other people that make my life rewarding so I reached out to musicians as well um, then there was you know chefs my mother was was a famous cook in our family um, so I reached out to people who love food like my mother did also comedians um, and it just kind of grew I even in the end reached out to some friends who were good wordsmiths and uh, asked them to to come on board too so just anybody who makes my life rewarding um, could could participate and they did so um, it was a really rewarding experience because when I was reaching out to people oftentimes I would ask them if they could refer someone um, to the project and they would and I discover um, new artists or new musicians or um, poets uh, that way so it, it was really a rich experience for me and it sort of took on a life of its own didn't it as you're describing it I mean you've got all these people they're recommending people people are not just okay I'm going to set aside a couple minutes and do this they were really getting into the word and the the sentence that, that they submitted to you people were so generous um, it's amazing when you put out when you go out to do something um, how that energy just reflects back like I remember asking a few people and just thinking well maybe they'd refer like maybe one person but in the end you know I, I remember this one case um, this lady she's a children's author she just thought this idea was was brilliant she's like you know I have a list of a hundred children's authors and she made sure she emailed me all of their contact information with their email and you know what they wrote so um, it was phenomenal it was just it, it was such an enjoyable experience kind of basking in all of that positive energy yeah and was it a situation where you were learning as, as you went along on this I mean you're, you're doing the project in memory of your mother to raise funds for mm -hmm. Alzheimer research but I'm thinking as you're going through this you have to go like wow I, I can vaguely remember that word or I never heard that word before but it's perfect in certain circumstances and I love the sound of it was this a learning experience for you as well Oh, for sure. You know, um, I, I've always been drawn towards languages, partly because my mother, um, obviously I grew up in a bilingual environment. So when I went to university, I studied French. And um, during my studies, I also took a few extra courses like Spanish and German. And then I also um, traveled overseas and lived in Japan for four years. So I studied Japanese and um I think it was in one of my Japanese lessons where my teacher was asking me to kind of like expand on my um, my sentence. They wanted me to use more vocabulary. And I was trying to translate back into English. And that's when I realized like, hey, I don't even use like three or four adjectives when I'm speaking in English to describe something normally. So I thought, you know, rather than studying all of these um, other languages, which I hardly ever use, um, why don't I just focus on English because it is it is the language that I do speak every day. So that's when I decided to um, kind of put all the eggs in, in this one book for 
um, example. And yeah, I, it's been such a, a learning journey for me now when I speak or I read a book, if I see a word that you used to um, bemuse me and bemuse me is one of those words. <laughs> and, and I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they used it in the context that I used to interpret it in, but it's, it's actually a lot of people get the word bemused wrong. Do you know what the word bemused means by any chance? Or now now you're, sc- now you're guess? scaring me because I probably have been using it wrong as well. How are you using the word? Uh, well, I'll tell you how I used to use the word bemused. Because bemuse sounds like amuse, right? Yes. So yes. a lot of people think bemuse means to be amused. Um, so when I heard this this gentleman use the word this weekend, I, I just kind of chuckled to myself because I was like, oh, my God, that's how I used to work. And to use that word myself. And, and um, I was just thinking, you know, it's just so confusing, <laughs> which is what... <laughs> which is actually what the word been using means. Um, so just examples like that, just to get more clarity around the language. And I'm not expecting everybody to know the words, but at least to have a conversation about the words and to, um, to learn through speaking, you know, because I think we are privileged if, if we are able to um, take some time and, and learn these um, complicated words. Um, well, yeah, and it's, but and as it's a so... writer... I was just going to say, it's so boring. We seem to, all these words available to us, we seem to come back to a certain group that we that we fall back on rather than expanding our vocabulary. Well, exactly. And I think in this day and age where we spend so much on everything else, like I, I know so many people who, you know, just go shopping every day after work and they spend like 20 or $50 on a new top or, or a gadget, but nobody seems to be investing in, in the languages and the vocabulary that we use, and that can be just as enriching, if not more. And it's so much cheaper too. So I think we should, um, you know, um, invest more in in that realm of of life. Um, and and you can find it to be very rewarding. And people, experience. yes, and people <laughs> can do that with the book. It's a rewarding life website, a rewardinglife.com. Cheryl Gordon, our guest on the program. Information at a website this week in America.us. I, I mentioned the essays. The essays are really interesting because it gives insight into your thought process with the book and uh, and about your mother. And you've taken the the, the letters from dementia, but you, you don't have them in that order. They're, they're scrambled during the course of the book. Talk about why you did that. Well, um, good question. So initially when I started um, writing the book, I just really wanted to collect sentences. Like I wanted to um, kind of disambiguate or disentangle those words that I oftentimes couldn't remember or just didn't understand. So that was my first goal. And then as I was reaching out to try to get the book published, a lot of the uh, publishers were telling me that I needed some sort of glue to stick the sentences together. And I was like, oh, I think it's a beautiful book just on its own with just the sentences. But since more and more publishers were telling me the same thing, I thought maybe they were onto something. So then I decided to write the essays and I took, I ended up taking a writing workshop and it was in my class um, where I was telling um, my, my, my fellow writers some ideas. And I was initially going to write an essay for each letter of the alphabet. But my teacher was like, that's a lot of essays, Cheryl. Yes. Why, don't you, why don't you try something a little smaller? Because he knew my timeline. Like, I wanted to, to kind of have this done in, in a few months. So one of, my, one of the fellow writers in the group said, why don't you do, um, you know, each letter for the word Alzheimer's? And um, I was like, oh, my God, that's a brilliant idea. But I had an essay already written with the letter N in it. And it was the essay N is for uh, Nadir. And that was one of... Um, you know, it was a very important essay for me. So I was like, oh, darn, it doesn't have an N in it. And then I thought, but dementia does. And dementia is only eight letters instead of, I forget how many there are in Alzheimer's right now. So it would be, mean less writing. And I also love the fact that dementia is actually the umbrella term. I think a lot of people mis- misunderstand the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. Because yes. um, I know personally when my mother uh, was being diagnosed doctors would often use those terms interchangeably and it was very confusing to us that we were like does she have alzheimer's dementia what's the difference so i really like the fact that dementia being the umbrella term that it is we kind of overarch the entire book and then i i speak about 
you know, her journey and, and the um, diagnosis through the essays and, and trying to help people understand that, you know, under that dementia term or umbrella, we have Alzheimer's, there's frontotemporal dementia, there's Lewy bodies, Parkinson's, et cetera. Yeah, in in the essays, the A, the Alzheimer, you talk about how it comes down to to things that ended up being called the thing. And I think for anyone who's gone through those circumstances, you find a loved one gets to that point where everything is labeled as the thing. That became the word that that sort of uh, catch all that covered everything, didn't it? Yes, and um, and I think that's when I started to realize, hey, you know. Here I am. I don't have dementia yet. Um, yet someone could describe my vocabulary as being pretty poor because, I, you know, oftentimes when I couldn't remember a word, I would just default to some prosaic term over and yes. over. And, um, and you know, there's a really brilliant quote. I hope you don't mind um, if I read it by Tony Robbins. No, please do. I read do. his book a long time ago, and in it he says that, People with an impoverished vocabulary live an impoverished emotional life. People with rich vocabularies have a multi-hued palette of colors with which to paint their experience, not only for others, but for themselves as well. Um, and that's uh, from one of Tony Robbins' book. And when I saw my mom, you know, lose her words and everything became the thing, it really kind of resonated with me, you know, there I was, and and I was often guilty of that. And um, I thought, geez, if if there's a way where I could harness those words that often give me a hard time, and maybe raise money for people who lose their words in the end, like my mom, that would be a, another aspect of a rewarding life to me. And that's why I plan to donate um, 50% of the profits of the book um, to the Alzheimer Society. This is a book that uh, that not only helps the Alzheimer Society. It's it's a it's a fascinating book. It, it it's fun. It will expand your vocabulary. A couple minutes left in the program. Shell Gordon is our guest on this week in America. The book is a rewarding life. The website a rewardinglife.com. Back to the essays. E is interesting. You talk about an epiphany you had. Tell us about mm-hmm. that. The, the impact that had on the project and on your life. Sure. Well, um, basically, the Epiphany essay, uh, which is the last essay of the book, uh, talks about a time when I was between jobs and I was on a yoga retreat. Um, And usually when I'm on a yoga retreat, I bring a few books with me and I happen to be reading The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. And um, in that book, she was asking her readers what a rewarding life meant to them. And it was when I saw that idiom or expression that I asked myself, well, what does the word rewarding actually mean? And when I actually just kind of looked at that word and kind of examined it kind of like for the first time, I mean, I'd seen that expression many, many times, but I never thought to think about it, what it actually meant. I saw an epiphany in my mind, like, you know, with this pun, it was not a rewarding life, but a rewording life. And I just kind of... Um, laugh to myself because every time I read a book, you know, I'm the type that's always going to circle um, a word that's not familiar to me. And, um, and it, you know, it, it took me a few years to understand what a rewarding life would eventually mean. But that was my first um, experience getting, you know, getting the pun and just really um, understanding that that was my definition of a rewarding life because rewarding means to give pleasure. And for me, what gives me pleasure is learning, um, you know, discussing, talking about words. Also, you know, it grew to, 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 to mean to collaborate with people who make my life rewarding. And then also lastly, to raise money for people who lose their words, their words in the end. So that is my definition of a reward of a rewarding life. <laughs> very similar to a rewarding life. Like, exactly, um, exactly. And you've done such an excellent job with this. It is a fascinating book. Cheryl Gordon is our guest on the program. The book is called A Rewarding Life. It's available all across the country, all across the countries in Canada, as well as here in the, in the U.S. Information available, and you can order by going to our website, a rewardinglife.com. Uh, Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Excellent job with the book. I, going through that, I circled some words I'm going to try to work into my everyday vocabulary. So <laughs> thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Uh, 
thank you, Rick. It was a splendiferous time <laughs> to use a word that's not in our everyday. <laughs> well, no, in fact, I think I've been doing this a long time. That's the first time that uh, a guest has said that, and we will keep this and play it back. In fact, suggest it for guests in the future. In fact, I should send them a copy of the book and let them pick a way to uh, to, to describe their experience on the program. Cheryl Gordon Please with do. us on the show. The book is called A Rewarding <laughs> Life. Information, of course, available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back after these messages. Don't go away. <laughs> 